Welcome to the Our Show once again on Andy D TV. Today I'm only honored and pleased to have Mr. Kofi Clue in the studio today. Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Could you, yeah, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a product of the youth and student movement from the 70s, particularly. Um, that's uh, helped to create the uh, political groundswell, mm -hmm. um, which uh, was taken advantage of by particularly Jerry John Rawlings and okay. uh, what became known as, first of all, the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council. I see. Um, that emerged in 1979. And yeah. then, you know, the follow-up of... Uh, with the um, Provisional National Defense Council okay. through 1981 coup d'etat. Wow. But I think for me, the important thing about it is the work we were trying to do within the student and youth movement towards okay. a different kind of change. Okay, what sort you know, of change? Well, if you aware of what the students and youth movement was like, particularly mm -hmm. in the 1970s when mm -hmm. um, Ghana was um, getting over the 24 February 1966 coup d'etat that overthrew Kwame Nkrumah mm -hmm. and uh, the disappointment of a lot of particularly um, young people okay. with what had come about, okay. you know, uh, we were mainly students, All right. and we saw how conditions were worsening okay. in, in our educational institutions. Okay. We saw how pressures were being put upon our parents All right. now to cough up you know, school fees, you okay. know, rising school fees. The cost of looking after us you right. know, was increasing. Okay. Um, there was pressure on um, what was being injured, particularly by university students, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, uh, free university you know, education, mm -hmm. the conditions in the universities, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so we started looking back with nostalgia you know, at the Kwame Nkrumah days in terms of what um, we were now reading, because uh, we had gone through a period where the, the books of Nkrumah were banned. Mm. You know, um, even it was a, a crime to carry the pictures of Kwame Nkrumah. At what point? Well, that was in the uh, aftermath of the 1966 coup d'etat. Okay. You know, so by their free fire and then, the yeah, yeah, and actually, okay. it was during the, um, the Busia government period, the Progress Party government period, okay. when uh, uh, Johnny F.S. Hansen okay. will come back into the country right. as a young lawyer, firebrand and okay. who um, challenged these laws, okay. you know, and actually uh, it was that the laws were put in place mm -hmm. in reaction to what he and his colleagues mm -hmm. um, were trying to do to revive okay. the, the political traditions of Nkrumah to, 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 and you know, this was a situation where our parents were getting dis disillusioned okay. with a change because you know, instead of things getting better, right. things were worsening, okay. right? And so, you know, it was easy for people like Johnny Hansen, you know, to uh, revive the memory of Nkrumah, and that actually threatened the uh, government of the day, the Progress Party government of the day, led okay, by, you know, K. Busia. So okay. they brought in laws to try and clamp down on this. So they banned Nkrumah's books, they banned anything to do with including the the pictures of, of, of Kwame Nkrumah. I see. Yes. And, and yeah, if we were found holding anything that was criminal offense. And what happened, what was incredible, was that Johnny Hansen actually defied them openly and at rallies was openly selling, the, you know, distributing the pictures the, the, of Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. So that fired our imagination, you know, as young people were seeing this defiance, you okay. know, of a government that had actually come in the wake of a military government that had removed Nkrumah. Right. So the, the radical upsurge okay. within that period of time 
was really, really, you know, uh, uh, inspiring to us. So we avidly devoured the works of Kwame Nkrumah. They were, you know, now freely circulating, particularly even in secondary schools, you know, and, and universities. And we, so we took on those ideas and so wanted, you know, a pan-African socialist-oriented change. Okay. Right. And that permeated the organizations we had, the youth organizations that we had, mm -hmm. and the students, even to the point that the National Union of Ghana students, representing all the students, then declared at one of its congresses that their option, their ideological option, was for scientific socialism. I mean, completely unheard of in, you know, in, in, in those times. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is the tradition from which we come. So the kind of change we wanted was, was mm -hmm. and that was also the time when the anti-appetite struggle was raging down in okay. Southern Africa, All right. with South Africa, right. uh, Zimbabwe, right. um, um, Moz uh, Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, okay. who all had charismatic leaders, okay. you know, and who were also student activists like Steve Biko and, and the rest. So mm. we could connect with, with, with them, right? Okay. And all of these, in, and then the black power struggles in the United States you know, of, of America at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So we could connect with all of this. And so there was a very, very, very radical atmosphere. And we all wanted a kind of change that first of all, will restore our pride as Africans, first mm -hmm. and foremost, because mm -hmm. we saw the government increasingly depending you know, on Foreign foreigners, you know, who uh, we, we saw an influx in, in our institutions of, for example, American Peace Corps, you know, uh, white teachers, mm. you know, and, you know, with the black consciousness movement, you know, influence from, from South Africa and, and the United States of America, you could see mm -hmm. what was our thinking, you know, at the right. time. So we wanted a pan-African right. socialist-oriented change. Okay. Many of us who were in the leadership of the uh, youth and student movement at the time, both on and off campuses. And okay. this was happening not just on campuses. Okay. You know, within communities, there were also similar radical youth rising up. You know, so this was the, the groundswell that was in the country. And we we'll say we are product of that pro Nkrumah pan African socialist movement. Did it help? They, the ideology of Nkrumah and the pan Africanism? Yeah. That, was it not to early for, for those ideologies? Not at all. I mean, you are quite elite, you are learned, but at the time, majority of the country were not in school. No, you see, this is the point, that um, it, we could easily connect with that, and the masses could easily connect with that. Right. Because, mind you, this was the time when um, people were trying to get over Right. The disappointment with the uh, overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. And people actually thought life was, you know, Kwame Nkrumah had introduced free, completely free, free education. Okay. Free uh, health care, right? You know, um, increasing uh, 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 electrification of the country, industrialization of the country. Mm -hmm. A lot of jobs were available. Right. You know, you knew that you walked from university into a job okay. with a bungalow, right? right? right. With all kinds of facilities. Right. This was wh why people, and then with an increase in educational institutions, mm -hmm. a lot of people looked to a brighter future, right? So the promise that Nkrumah's government with its socialist mm -hmm. uh, uh, orientation was an obstacle right. to things even getting better than what Nkrumah you know, was doing was such that those even who supported the overthrow of Nkrumah, you know, thought that things would get better. Okay. And so when they saw that these rather things were being eroded, mm -hmm. right, and there was increasing suffering in the country, mm -hmm. you know, the whole from Nkrumah movement across the country, you know, began to rise. Now, the CPP was a phenomenal organization, right? It was not just you know, like today, how party activists, and so, no, 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 no. The CPP had, you know, uh, 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 
integral wings like the trade unions, mm -hmm. like women's organizations, mm -hmm. youth organizations, mm -hmm. student organizations, mm -hmm. you know, farmers' organizations, mm -hmm. all these were integral parts of the CPP. Mm -hmm. So when things began to change, mm -hmm. you know, what began to rise up was this, you know, a new mass movement around the CPP, you know, so which um, they had tried to crush, mm -hmm. you see. And so we were influenced by that. For example, you know, how did I start um, um, my political education? My father, when I was still in primary school, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, right around when I started school, literally, what I learned to read and, 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 and write with was the autobiography of Kwame Nkrumah. Right. right. So, so, so that those influences yeah. on it was easy. It was easy. Were well, like, you know, logs really literally set ablaze. So that general rise in the country that you no, know, we've been disappointed. Let's at least try and get back to where we were. You know, came from the masses, and and that was why you know the students who came from their communities into secondary schools into universities could connect with the feelings of the, of the, of the masses okay. of the people and brought it. So now, now I get it. So you, you, you see that yeah. it, were, were not, it was not an isolated intellectual circle of people toying with these ideas, no. I mean, if we take it, I mean, people would probably disagree with me. But if you take Nkrumah yeah. and perhaps Kufo who followed a little bit of yeah. the steps and yeah. there is no president that could be in any way in competition with his achievement. Yeah. But his ideology of this Pan-Africanism is what yeah. I have a problem with. Because I feel, even if that is the case, he still employed, he, he had adopted a lot of these Westerners, uh, uh, you know, ideology into his policies. Um, he had it. So why couldn't um, probably himself, uh, you know, invite them to help him because he couldn't do it. I mean, it was just undoable situation for him. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Actually, the 1966 coup d'etat right. occurred in February 1966, soon after the commissioning okay. of the Volta River you know, hydroelectric project. Okay. Now, Nkrumah had pushed mm -hmm levels of industrialization, even yeah. without okay. massive supply of, you know, el electrical energy, right? Yeah. You know, the, the, the Ghana Industrial Holding, you know, corporation, Gihok, and that right. Gihok, lots of, you know, uh, um, factories had been opened. We're producing our own sugar. We're producing our own match. We're even producing our televisions. We're producing radios. You know, cars were being assembled in Ghana, right? By Ghanaians. Yes. Without any... Assistance. No, of course we had assistance. Good. But you see, the way it was, and this is very interesting for okay. people, to, the kind of agreements Nkrumah reached right. with foreign companies, right, right, was to train Ghanaians okay. to take over those jobs. Right. And that was a, that was an integral part of those agreements. Okay. And that is why lots of Ghanaians were going abroad from university straight because you came and you to, you know, and, and because they were dealing also largely with the socialist countries of right. Eastern Europe, okay. you know, China, Soviet Union, and so on and so forth, it, it was easy to have those kinds of agreements. Those people didn't okay. come to stay, mm. right? Mm. To open their own private businesses mm. and stay. They came to okay. assist the nation, okay. right? right? And train its own cadres, its mm. own professionals, its own specialists to take over from them. So there wasn't a problem that white people had come, even unlike the colonial times, okay. where white people had come to stay, yeah. right, and open and run yeah. their own businesses and right. take over all spheres of the economy. Okay. You know, this was what Nkrumah and others organized against right. in the anti-colonial struggle for independence. Okay. If you actually study a lot of the anti-colonial resistance, particularly in the Gold Coast of those times. You know, you saw our indigenous business people, mm -hmm. market women, yeah. right? right? You know, working people, yeah. right? Rallying against the economic situation which had given monopoly mm -hmm. to, foreign, to foreigners mm -hmm. to dictate what was happening. You know, the, 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 uh, 
the boycotts, mm -hmm. right? By Lee Bonnie and the rest. It was mm -hmm. all against, you know, uh, 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 this kind of thing. So Nkrumah knew, you know, in fact, this was was what Nkrumah rallied people around to oppose. So he couldn't repeat the same thing. He didn't seek to repeat it. And we were seeing how, as I told you, you walk from a university straight into a managerial job or into a, 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 a school. But with right? his statement to say right. that Africans are capable of handling their own affairs, yeah. Yeah. when he rightly knew, we couldn't. No, because we, he, he, he employed the, the help of uh, the, the very people he's uh, actually actually campaigning against. No, and let's get it clear. Right. What Nkrumah did was this. Right. Like, and this was not just Nkrumah's ideas alone, right? You're talking about the whole CPP? No, it's not just CPP alone, Okay. right? Whole... Ever since the 15th century, All right. when Europeans started mm -hmm. coming onto our shores mm -hmm. and started, you know, uh, 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 you know put, imposing themselves on us and taking over, you know, all spheres of our lives. Right. There was resistance. Ayala, yeah. you know, they colonized all of that and Europeanized it. You know, they went to Asia, they colonized it you know, in a genocidal fashion, right? Okay, so they took literally took over the whole world. Okay. Now, um, when, but they realized that the resistance that never stopped, the resistance that, like Nkrumah himself, that actually when you go into history, when you know African history. Right? Mm. All that Europe was claiming for itself was from African achievements. Right? When we were our ancestors were building pyramids, mm. you know, with you know science and technology, mm. sophisticated science and technology, mathematics, medicine, right, architecture, mm. Europeans were still crawling in the caves, right? They learned all of that from us. They they found this was not taught to them in, in schools. And this is the Africa. This our modern day African world. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm telling that like, this is what inspired them because they were denied this knowledge. So they 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 I'm knew not that, sure about that. They knew that they could do it again. Okay. But in order to do it again, right. you had to tackle mm -hmm. Eurocentric racist indoctrination through miseducation of African people, and because they had doses of it. Right? They knew that we could do it again, but it would take some time. And you needed to prepare new generations, with new forms of education, you know, new forms of organizing society. So why did they, if, if that is so bad, why did we embrace it? I mean, if we knew the-, the We embrace what? The end, they are teaching the white people. I mean, for, <laughs> no, let's all, get it clear. Let's yeah, get it clear. Because, I mean, they introduced education system in our system. No, they? no. So no 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 no. Schools, you see, the, the point is that the point is that when you when you study education, right, you know that education happens in different ways. Right. We had our own system of education before they came. Like what? We, what produced the scientists who built the pyramids, who developed medicine, who developed philosophy, right? Right. I I I, 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 I read Nkrumah's you know uh, inaugural speech, right. To, uh, of, uh, of, of Legon, when he talked about these, these, these things, right? We had African scientists, you know? We had Africans who were studying the stars, right? So what has happened to all of them? Well, the <laughs> point, this is the whole point, <laughs> right. that the European intervention for centuries, right. from the 15th century and before them, the Arab, you know, uh, intrusion in Africa, there, there, there are good books on it, mm. the destruction of African civilization, uh, civilizations, um, by I think Chancellor Williams, okay. you know, and Lost Legacy, okay. you know, by John Jackson, right? When you read these things, which and then Kesley effort as well, right? And, and and again, this was not just to be quite fair, right? This was not just the thinking of you know socialist-oriented Pan-African radicals. Even J. B. Dankwa right. and Co. Mm -hmm. you know, were talking about these things, okay. Right. Where, where, so where, where where has it disappeared? To I mean, that is the point. Yeah, that, that so, from the fifteenth century right up to the the twentieth century right right mm -hmm. Europeans had systematically mm -hmm. destroyed these things right, carted lots of our treasures right into museums in Europe. I work in the British Museum and a number of museums, Natural History Museum, have worked over years. Let me take you there and see what has been looted from Africa, you know, ancient treasures, 
right? Which are locked up. They're not on display. They are locked up in the vaults of museums in Europe and, 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 and North America, right? Who, who is it to blame? I mean, are we blaming our No, first of all, I'm, first of yeah, all, yeah. they came doing this mm -hmm. with violence. Violence on a scale humanity had never experienced before, right? They brought, you know, gunpowder was invented by the Chinese. They didn't weaponize it against human beings. Okay. It was it was for their festivals. It was a toy. Yeah. Right? Right. Europeans took that from them. Right. And weaponized it to use against human beings. Okay. Right? So the level of and that is the thing, up till now, you know, who were the first to produce nuclear weapons, if not Europeans? Right? So it is that propensity for for genocidal violence. Right, that today, even Europeans themselves are the forefront of the fight against ecocide because this way of dealing with people and dealing with the planet, you know, is now threatening the very planet itself. Because today, if you know, there, are, there are atomic weapons that will completely blow the planet apart, right? So, when Europeans themselves are now realizing that where we are going, where we've taken humanity, where we've come so to how humanity come, to, how come, you know, it's, how, it's how too come? dangerous. Let's do something about it. I understand, we need to listen. Mr. Kru, yeah. now, even if we're distorted, distracted in our ways of thinking, yeah. education and everything, we can still rise up again, isn't it? Well, that is the whole point. And this was what the whole but it seems that we are movement. even going back. Let's but let's see why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Good what, question. What let's see why. Yeah. First of all, I just right. wanted to make this apart from the looting, there, there was also a lot of burning. For example, okay. the University of Timbuktu, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When it was invaded, you know, right. by Arabs, you know, they paint the whole place down, took the scholars out, you know, from from from, from there. I, 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 and enslaved them, okay? So the Europeans came in after the, the, the uh, in the following the devastation caused by uh, uh, Arabs from, from uh, uh, Asia, you know, then in the wake came Europeans, okay? And for centuries, Europeans have systematically tried to erase even the whole civilization of, you know, uh, uh, Northern Africa, you no, know, with an imprint. I, they claimed it was not African. Recently, uh, the, uh, they celebrated the anniversary of, you know, of the Nazis, yeah. uh, Germany, yeah. um, Nazi and all that. They move forward yeah. and do greater things. We still get stuck in our tracks <laughs> with colonialism. And that is bringing Africa Let, to the people. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I are agree. we to blame the white people for an uncut, uncovered cutters, uh, corruption that is, you yeah. know, why are we blaming it? Yes, to a certain extent, because what has happened? Right. What has happened? Europeans knowing that the resistance Africans were putting up, and not just Africans, the entire colonized world, because Europeans colonized not just Africa, they, they colonized the whole of the, what they now call the Americas, which, mm -hmm. you know, is original, course, yeah. the North, South, Central, is Abiyala. Yeah. You know, they colonized all of that and Europeanized it. You know, they went to Asia, they colonized it you know, in a genocidal fashion, right? Okay, so they took, literally took over the whole world, okay? Now, um, when, but they realized that the resistance that never stopped, the resistance that was building up, you know, would one day drive them out. Like, for example, with Africans, they imposed on us. They said we're not human beings. We were beasts that could, should be enslaved, and they introduced a system of enslavement that the world had never known before, chattel enslavement, where you deny the humanity of the person enslaved. Mm -hmm. Right? Our domestic system of, you know, servitude did not deny that we're human beings. Okay? But that is what they brought. Okay? So, the, the, the extent of violence was, was such that, you know, it, it, we, we, because we hadn't, we went, we had no idea that this was what it was. It was, to some extent, we're taken by surprise and conquered. But the resistance builder, builder, the chattel, the chattel is, we compel them to abolish it. She studied the Haitian I mean, revolution. Mandela, Mandela so was a Pan Africanist, right? <laughs> well, no, we wouldn't say Mandela, but there is people. There are people like Mangaliso Sobukwe and others, you know, who were Pan Africanists from from uh, 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 that part of the continent. So, in effect, let me just quickly tie this up so that you know it yeah. makes it easier for us to move forward. Okay. That resistance forced them because they knew. We compelled them to events like the Haitian Revolution, the, the first 
in history, successful revolt of enslaved people. Africans did not on the continent of Africa, in faraway Haiti, in the, the, the Abiyala, which they now call the Americas. So they knew that our persistence in resisting colonialism was also going to compel them to go one day. So what did they do? What, what did, did they do? What did they do? You know the Elves. Right. We call Europeans Yevu. Okay. Do you, do you know where that comes from? Where the, where is it comes from the Eve term a ye vuo. It means cunning dogs. So Europeans, when they are doing their thing, they take into the future and they prepare mm -hmm. with plan, not just with plan A, plan B, plan C. Okay. So they knew that we would, they would be compatible. So what did they do? That's why they brought the schools. Their schools said we, we were not educated. We didn't know anything about knowledge. We never produced knowledge. And they were now coming to teach us and through that civilize us. Okay. They created their schools, destroyed our schools. There is an example, for example, I'll give you the Krobo example. Right? The Krobo had a sophisticated system of education whereby, for example, with girls, what is now the depot, you know, uh, very, very destroyed remnants. They're almost naked. Anyway. No, no. Of <laughs> girls' education, <laughs> okay. where they come girls right. for three years okay. and taught them properly okay. to become African women. Okay. And all African communities, if you study them, you know, the, 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 they had systems of education like this. Okay. They came and said this was not education. They were introducing this. And what did they do with that? Okay. And some of us, you see, this is when we as young people started rising, going back with Tunkruma's ideas in the 70s. These were some of the things that influenced us. They trained us to manage their affairs so that they can still remotely control Africa when they're not physically present. So we went to school with, you know, studied with, uh, with, uh, to, 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 to endure Eurocentric miseducation, which said Europe was the height of everything. And even if you were to develop, we had to look up to Europe. We had to copy everything European. You have to let Europeans tell us what to do, you know. And there were people who accepted that. When Krumah and others came abroad, and were open. And first of all, Kweji Agri, who was the headmaster of uh, the Achinota school that mm -hmm. Nkrumah went to, mm -hmm. to train as a teacher, mm -hmm. right? Who had trained in America, mm -hmm. okay, had started opening the eyes of people like Nkrumah to okay. this. So when Nkrumah himself went to, to Europe, saw many Africans, engaged with them, became involved in the Pan African movement, he came up, that's when he knew. And, and develop the politics of the fact that we could we could take back our continent, mm. take power, you know, uh, change the things Europeans had imposed on us, and with a Pan-African thinking, with black consciousness, with a re regaining our own African personality, we could do things completely differently. And this was what he started doing and was succeeding. But Nkrumah, if you read Consciencism, Nkrumah explained that you cannot, Africa cannot ignore the fact mm -hmm. that in the thousands and even millennia of our history, mm -hmm. we've had other people engage with us. Mm -hmm. Our people have traveled, and mm -hmm. of course, if you, you know, the, the, in the so-called empire of mm -hmm. Mali, the polity of Mali, it was mm -hmm. not an empire, you know, the polity of Mali, had one of its um, uh, uh, chiefs, right, leaders, who made a voyage to the Americas. This is history. Before Europeans ever, you know, went to say that they were discovering the so-called Americas, right? This was how we So we also were traveling. We also were learning. We, and all of this was influencing Africa. So in conscious argues, we can't ignore the fact that we've had experiences with the Arabs and, you know, and who introduced Islam you know, to the continent. And Islam, too, our people had embraced it to some extent and done certain things with it. You know, the Europeans would have come and introduced the, 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 the Euro-Christian influence in Africa. Is there. So if Africa were to progress, right, it cannot just 
completely erase all of these things. It has to see, as our people have always done, following the concept of Sankofa, you go into the past, you take the best, leave the worst behind, you know, and you move on, mm -hmm. you know, to forge, you know, to brighten your present and carve out, you know, a brighter future for yourself. So Nkrumah's position in consciousness was that, yes, we've got to use, return to our own original African foundation as a foundation of our progress. But we were also following what our ancestors had done mm -hmm. for, for millennia. Right. We will also have to select from what we've seen from other people, okay. right, in and order to move forward. And this is what he was trying to do. So in, in effect, in saying that let us reclaim Africa, yeah and learn to manage things by ourselves, well, then, you know, but course, let us also... We then we need also their, their knowledge a little bit. That yes. is what he was of saying. Course. That's what of he course. was saying. We'll take a short break and when we come <laughs> okay. back, we'll delve more into <laughs> the uh, current affairs. Thank you very much. Maintaining a present at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associate was established. Yes. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law, adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation and so on up to date has been broken and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law locally in London and across the borders in Ghana where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203. One three zero zero seven five one. Welcome back again. Just before the break, we were talking about the Pan Africanism of, and the ideology of Nkrumah. But now we're going to delve into something much more important: the youth and the student movement, yeah. the union, and all that. Tell me more about it. Why did it all come about? Why did all students unite to do that? Well, as I said, the the the, the push factor. Right. was the Westerning conditions. Okay. And the fact that, you know, those even who believed that the overthrow of Nkrumah would have even created better situation okay. could now see clearly that that was not happening. Okay. So, you know, the fact that they had... You see, for young people particularly, mm -hmm. if you ban something, right. you're just... You know, whetting their appetite and okay. curiosity to go into it. To look into it. You know, so you know, we went into this, and actually, the the schools and universities, mm -hmm. secondary schools and universities, mm -hmm. had really, really very good teachers. Okay. You know, had really, really great. You know, um, intellectuals okay. who were encouraging mm -hmm. um, young people to be critical. You know, to search. You know, and to try and work out solutions to the problems, okay. you know, of the right. country. Right. So we went into these books of Nkrumah and not just Nkrumah of, you know, African writers, Franz Fanon, mm -hmm. you know, um, Lumumba and um, Du Bois, you know. And then new ones were coming, mm -hmm. right? You know, like Amilcar Cabral. Mm -hmm. um, Biko, all these people were now coming onto the scene as well and producing mm -hmm. literature. The African Americans like Maula Nakarenga, uh, John Henry Clark were all becoming, you know, um, if Angela Davis and all these, you know, the Panthers, the Black Panthers, George Jackson, all these people were producing literature, which we were all reading, you know. And you see, the, there was a lot of influx of Americans, including mm -hmm. African Americans, onto our university campuses, right? Mm -hmm. And so they brought the influences of the Black Power movement. So in effect, that groundswell of radical intellectual ideas was beginning to galvanize mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the student movement in particular. And mm -hmm. because of the uh, fact that a lot of uh, 
uh, teachers came from the universities, a lot of them because they couldn't get into the civil service jobs and the factories and so on and so forth, which are now closing. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were now going to teach in secondary schools. Okay. You see, right. and now they are introduced the national service. So we they brought all these ideas into the secondary schools. Okay. And some of us met them in the secondary schools. Okay. So for me personally, what I had learned from the autobiography in Nkrumah and Nkrumah's works, even from in terms of what my father handed mm -hmm. over to me to, mm -hmm. to study, you know, um, was now added to by when I met in secondary school, outstanding teachers like Nyapa Wenchum Kicha, you know, and who introduced me to people, some of the people are, are still around, you know, mm -hmm. apart from people like uh, uh, Nuhu Dramani, there are mm -hmm. people around now, you know, still like, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, right. Mohammed Ibn Chambas and so on and so forth, right? right? So now, you know, um, we, we, we did not just debate, discuss and debate these ideas, mm -hmm. we wanted to practice them. Okay. Okay, and that's when, into trying to shape the National Union of Ghana students mm -hmm. to, you know, become a vehicle for carrying out these ideas. Then um, there was also successfully uh, formed the All African Students Union, mm -hmm. which was actually helped mm -hmm. by when the uh, 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 Kutua Champong came mm -hmm. in 1972 to remove the Busia government. Okay. You know, all there was like a, a flourishing of all these things, we could now freely do these things in the open instead mm -hmm. of hiding to do them. Mm -hmm. You know, so these galvanizers. So the, and in, in effect, right? This was a champions to a certain extent. This turn was turned against a chapel mm -hmm. because critical students and young people across the country could find faults mm -hmm. very easily using these ideological, you know, guidelines with what a champion was was, was doing, mm -hmm. and a champions political force also capitalized on this growing discontent, right, amongst the students and um, those who wanted their country to return to civil, uh, civil you know, mm -hmm. uh, constitutional rule, okay. you know, came behind the students. So, you know, they were funding and pushing and supporting the students. How then did the affiliation with Rollins come, into, come to be? I would say not me personally, well, you know, student, in terms of the, the student. student. Yeah. So the students then became the most active force because yeah. one of the things that Champon was doing also was that Champon was frequently right. um, uh, sending soldiers onto the campuses and in confrontations, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with soldiers and police people who were being sent by the Champon government, usually the universities would be closed and people would go. That only allowed us to go around the country, you know, and, and further galvanize, you know, yeah. the, uh, not just students in secondary schools, but also in our yeah, communities, okay. right? And, and so a real groundswell mm -hmm. of, you know, demanding change, mm -hmm from the Champong government was there. And in, economically, the situation was also getting worse because Achampong was also following this you know, neoliberal agenda of privatization. Mm -hmm. He was doing it very carefully, you know, but right. it was you know, increasing the hardships. Mm -hmm. And even within the military, mm -hmm. right, there was a lot of discontent. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of the soldiers, the, the ordinary ranks, were coming from the poorer sections, you know, mm -hmm. of our communities, mm -hmm. and thinking that the military would give them better opportunities. You mm -hmm. know, they were not getting that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, 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 they saw a small uh, officer corps, mm -hmm. you know, enjoying themselves. And even amongst the officer corps, you could see differences, mm -hmm. right? Now, when we look back on all of these things, they looked so petty in those times, mm -hmm. right? Because, for example, Champon never left the barracks. Okay. He stayed in Bemakam. Okay. Okay. Um, he would, you know, if you look at the cars they were using, there were Porsche cars during that time. They were still relatively modest. Okay. But to us, at that time, no, this was too much. You see, and the influence that no, there should be greater equality in the society. There should be a fairer distribution, mm -hmm. you know, of wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, there should be better opportunities for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're seeing increasing inequalities. Mm -hmm. And these were the things that um, actually created the atmosphere where, again, students were talking to their mates, 
in the armed forces, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and that uh, radical atmosphere in the country yeah. was what made the likes of Jerry John Rawlings to emerge. A significant factor in this, which is important, is that, for example, the, uh, the Chikotas, Chachu and Fui, mm -hmm. were very influential amongst university students, right? And they were very radical-minded, at least in the things they taught, you know, and they were not alone. There were people like Akela Pasoya, Emmanuel Hansen, uh, um, Chris Hesse, you know, uh, Jawa Pronti. All, all these people were around on the campuses who, who, were, who were known Pan-African socialists, mm -hmm. right? Johnny Hansen was there, you know, still supporting a lot of uh, this youth and students' activism mm -hmm. that was happening. In fact, many of us, you know, used his office, opened his office for us to run our youth organizations, you know, from and student organizations from mm -hmm. there. So when they closed the campuses, mm -hmm. that's where we, 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 we found refuge. Mm -hmm. And then the Chiketas had, you know, um, because they were on the campus, yeah. it allowed somebody like Captain Kojo Chikata, who had experience, you know, in the... Uh, 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 anti-colonial fights in Angola, right? Mm -hmm. You know, was also fr uh, uh, frequenting the, uh, the, the campuses, you know, and people were interacting. Mm -hmm. So it was these things that brought a relationship between the rebellious, you know, youth and students and disgruntled forces in the, in, 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 in the, in, in the armed forces, right? But you, but, you the, the, the student, they know like the ideology of all the rule of uh, of uh, Champo yeah. because of the intimidation. Yeah. yeah. Why did you trust the uh, the the uh, the then PNDC? No, we didn't. You see, yeah. the point is this: mm -hmm. um, most right. students right. wanted a change um, to civilian constitutional rule. Okay. Right. Right. And because the Achampong regime was a military one, right, right, and in fact it was worsened when Achampong was removed. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because Achampong tried because of the Unigov idea he was mm. trying to promote, where he wanted a certain mm. level right. of involvement of civilians, mm -hmm. you know, in a system of governance, okay. you know, where the civilians and the military yeah. will combine, you mm -hmm. know, in 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 running government, mm -hmm. you know, which you know, sparked a lot of opposition in certain circles, okay. right? But because of that idea, mm -hmm. you know, a certain section, mm -hmm. senior of, of, of officers, removed a chapel. Okay. Right? So it became even more of a militaristic regime, right? And so our view was that, come on, you know, you, you know if, if something wasn't done, yeah. right, these people just perpetuate themselves. And that is when students... Some students, some mm -hmm. students, and even intellectuals in the country started encouraging certain sections in the armed forces okay. to, Which to, part to you... carry out a coup d'etat. Okay. No. Which part did you belong to? I was some completely speakers? opposed to that. To the coup d'etat? Right. I was completely opposed to the idea. Because, you see, for some of us who... Um, were heavily influenced by the teachings of Nkrumah, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, had read his books like the Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare, class, the books he wrote from exile, yeah. you know, um, uh, that days in Ghana, which mm -hmm. was critical of even the CPP itself, right. you know, and mm -hmm. spoke about some of the errors, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, you know, he himself and the CPP made in government, how to rectify that. And out of that came books like the Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare, a class struggle in Africa, revolutionary path, all of these things influenced our thinking. So we were beginning to conceptualize and organize for a different kind of change, which would be, which is free from the masses of our people, mm -hmm. right? Better organized, mm -hmm. you know, and even armed, for example, you know, so that the, 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 major, the civilian population, right. you know, right. would take the lead, okay. right? In effecting revolutionary change. Okay. So, and, and by that time, we are also seeing how even so called revolutionary coup d'etats, mm -hmm. you know, across the world mm -hmm. were not yielding much of a change, mm -hmm. right? And we had begun studying the literature, mm -hmm. you know, which informed us about the fact that no, uh, 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 
a coup d'etat way mm -hmm. would not produce a revolution, mm -hmm. right? The kind, at least the kind of people's revolution, uh, you know, that we thought, you know, some of us thought was the answer. Yeah. But that is where we divided. You see, you know, there were a section of the uh, students and, 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 and teachers, right, who felt that no, you know, they needed, once there were disgruntled elements in the armed forces, you know, they needed to use them mm -hmm. to effect change, okay. you know. And these were issues of debate. For mm -hmm. example, I belong to a group called the Socialist Revolutionary Youth League of Ghana, Strelo, yeah. right? right? And our position was that no, you know, we needed to rather follow Nkrumah's uh, uh, guidelines and, and, and work amongst the civilian population forming what we call, you know, committees for people's revolutionary democracy, right? And out of that will arise the, the, the better organized masses of our people, you know, in link with other African people, we link with the liberation movements in Southern Africa, for example, in the uh, Portuguese colonies, so to effect point, the pan-African revolutionary transformation of the continent. Okay, so at this point, yes. where a champo has been removed, yeah. I mean, the, the part of this... No, 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 we didn't get there yet. Okay. It just were the debates raging. But then what happened that mm. some of our friends right. who believed in the coup d'etat way yeah. started talking to some of us. Okay. So they started plotting and doing their things, you know, secretly. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is how, you know, they connected more with the soldiers and encouraged the coup d'etat. Right. But so I'm, I'm more about the part, the, the part of the student union that did not want the coup, yes. especially your part. Yeah. What sort of ideas did you have then? Did you say, OK, now this government is out of We want an election to elect a civilian to lead the country. Was that the idea? Well, uh, that became the dominant idea within the youth and student movement throughout the country. Actually. Okay. And that is why when the, the military er, erupted, mm -hmm. military er, erupted mm -hmm. on 4th June, 1979, mm -hmm. there was a clear signal that you can't hang around. Okay. Yours is to prepare as in the soonest possible time for a civilian administration. Okay. That was a, you know, consensus. Okay. So the people who thought that they could make revolution through coup d'etat and right. perpetuate this thing, where, where in the minority they knew it. Okay. Right? Right. And, and, and these differences manifested themselves again, if you study the, the, the what went on in the Armed Forces Revolutionary you know, Council, mm -hmm. you know, you saw people like Wachijan, yeah. right? Uh, Captain Bacham for and the rest who insisted that no, they were there to do a house cleaning exercise and bring in a civilian administration, mm -hmm. period, right. right? You know, Rollins and co, you know, actually urged on by some of our friends, right, who thought that this was an opportunity Who were some of those friends? Well, you know them, you know, Chris Satine. Okay. Uh, um, was one of the main ones, people like Nye Ayen, people like Zayebo, you know, Tata Fosu, you know, mm. um, yeah, and around them were also, you know, later on all kinds of characters, right? These were people who, they, we were, listen, we had uh, uh, Aluta, which was a, a periodical of the National Union of Ghana Students, you know, mm -hmm. and we, we, we were, I was part of the editorial board together mm -hmm. with some of these people, mm -hmm. Zayebo, Nyeayen, you know, uh, Napoleon Abdullahi, Tata Ofosu, you know, yeah. Right? So, so they, most of those who were on that editorial board with me, for example, you know, were part of the, 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 the putschist elements. You know, they, they, they sided with this whole idea of uh, 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 let's transform the country by uh, 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 a revolution through a coup d'etat, mm -hmm. and were not satisfied mm -hmm. with the pressure mm -hmm. to, for the AFRC to hand over. Okay. Okay. Right. So, you know, they then went together with Rollins to create the June 4th movement. People like Kwesi Edu and, 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 um, and Nicholas Atampugri um, uh, uh, and co, right? They went and created the June 4th movement, right? 
Our, our response to that was develop a socialist revolutionary youth movement. At that, at that oh. point, when did they, they merge with Joe Fox? What, what were you doing then? The well, we, we, we were opposing them in debates. Okay. Right? We were opposing them in debates in, 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 and so on and so forth. We were doing something different. You know, for example, I've told you that you know, Strelok's position was that let's go amongst the, the masses of our people. Let's create committees for people's revolutionary democracy as local organs everywhere. Okay. You know, and let's, let's build up the, the civilian you know, political force, conscious okay. political force, sure. the Pan-African socialist, or, that would make those changes. Okay. But they went along and created the June 4th movement. Okay. okay. And the June 4th movement actively, you know, planned to make a coup d'etat to remove the Liman government. Okay. Right? Right. And that then the rest is all the history that we know. But, but didn't but, you ever speak to Liman? Didn't your, your side... No, by that time, I personally, I had left the country to study in the Soviet Union. Okay, but I'm sure you had friends. Oh, yes, the, definitely. So because the social was, was, continued. was Liman then just stubborn to hear or listen? People I'm were sure talking something. to Liman. Right. Um, because we had our influences, you okay. know, um, you know, us pro Nkrumah youth, you mm -hmm. know, through people like Johnny Hanson, right. who, you know, to, during the that period leading mm -hmm. up to the elections, you know, we, we joined with him to create the People's Revolutionary Party, okay. you know, along Nkrumah's lines, you know. Right. Um, and then that later on merged with the uh, People's National Party, you okay. know, even initially we didn't agree, but through mm -hmm. those kind of connections, we kept advising and talking to um, Liman. But you see, Liman got scared of the, uh, being removed by the radicalizing, you know, um, revolutionary-minded socialists within the PNP, right? Mm -hmm. So he also didn't trust advice, our advice coming through people like uh, Johnny Hanson in terms of what should be done, mm -hmm. right? You know, so he, he really felt that he couldn't really trust anybody. Okay. Okay. And there are speculations. You've heard that some people mm. have said it. You know, Dabuga and others. Mm. You know, have spoken about the fact that you know they were merged to believe that Liman wanted you know to consolidate his regime through a coup d'état. You know, mm -hmm. uh, which Rawlings was offering. You know, that would get rid of the people troublesome mm -hmm. uh, socialist elements. Mm -hmm. You know, who were trying to destabilize his, his government because it was true that people were so dissatisfied with Liman as leader of the. Uh, PNP, that there was talk of replacing him mm -hmm. at the next Congress, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I cannot verify what Adabuga said. You know, yeah. so, uh, there are some of my friends who are, who are saying that was not true. But at the end of the day, you know, certainly it was clear that Liman felt so insecure. Okay. Right? right. So he became very paralyzed. Okay. Okay. And that was why, you know, it was easy to remove him. Okay. Right? But we were opposed to it. Mm. Even, you know, those some of our friends who, you know, we in the uh, Social Revolutionary Youth League of Ghana had differences with, you know, that, that, that is um, people like uh, Kweku Baku, mm -hmm. uh, Kwesi Agble, okay. you know, uh, Yahudula B, Natayivo, and the rest went and created the movement on national affairs, MONAS, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, our disagreement was that it was 100% backing of Wachi Chan. Okay. Again, another military officer. Okay. You see, so, in effect, you know, Mona sided with Wachijan on the one hand, and the Jew for Movement sided with uh, uh, Jerry John Rollins. And we, you know, who, who were the core group within uh, Sri Lanka, felt that no, that was, not, that was wrong. So, even from the Soviet, you know, we said that the movement of Ghanaian youth and students and working people for revolutionary democracy, Moja spread, right? And, and where we were building bases inside the country. You know, our position when the uh, uh, 31st December coup d'etat occurred mm -hmm. was this. Some of us believed it would not produce any genuine revolution in the country. We were convinced by what we had studied, by our experience of uh, mm -hmm. revolutionary processes in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. I was then studying in the Soviet Union. I had spent before then, you know, um, um, I had spent almost a year in Cuba, okay. you know, studying practically the Cuban Revolution. Okay. You know, so I was convinced that mm -hmm. a coup d'etat would never, never, never yield a genuine revolution, you know, in any way. Right? I was very, very convinced about that. 
Okay, some didn't. So back when the 31st December coup occurred, our position as Moja spread was that let us, let Rawlings and Co. demonstrate to the world how this approach would fail in producing a true revolution. Mm -hmm. Let us not put ourselves in the directly in the firing line mm -hmm. so that they'll say we were against it. So if anything went wrong, it yeah, went wrong blame. because we opposed it. Yeah. We stood in their way. Okay. You know, so we said, no. In fact, our position as much as a critical support to the PNDC, which means we would not be part of them. We would not take any government positions with them, you know, but recognize some of our friends, you know, for various reasons. And I would say openly, a lot of it had to do with careerist opportunism, okay. period, right? right? You know, went along with Rollins, right? right? Because they refused to do mass revolutionary work around the country. They comfortably were in their universities and wanted to march from these universities where they went to the national service, you know, and found the hardships of everyday life. They were quickly looking for positions, more comfortable positions in government, Okay. right? So for me, you know, and some of us, you know, in Sri Lanka, Boja Spread, it was sheer careerist opportunism okay. on the part of those people. All right. They wanted a quick fix, right. you know, out of their own personality. We were sure they were going to fail, okay. right? And they would learn the bitter lessons. Right. But we didn't want to be directly standing in their way. Okay. To the, um, uh, some of our friends who also opposed, you know, the, who, the, the ones who firm Monas, yeah. Kokubaku, Natayevo, Kwesi Agula, and the rest, from what we now know, we're being drawn into mm -hmm. a counter coup, mm -hmm. you know, together with uh, um, Wachijan and the rest. Wachijan was outside, okay. but he was actively, you know, mm -hmm. organizing a counter coup against the PNDC, Jerry John Rawlings and the PNDC. Okay. And, you know, there were rumors that uh, Kwekubaku and others in Monas were lending, were part of those. Uh, uh, plots okay. and so they got arrested okay. and locked up for, for many years by the Rollins, you know, um, uh, okay. government, right? Okay. But we steered clear away from all of this, knowing that they would fail. Do you have and any we regrets? were proved, he said. Do you have any regret for staying away? Yes. No. 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 You no. Don't? No. I don't have any. In fact, we have been proved correct. We have been proved correct because in less than two years, mm -hmm. right, yeah. our friends were chased out. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they stood, and to be fair to them, mm -hmm. you know, they stood for radical policies. Right. You know, they, they wanted a stop to the neoliberal mm -hmm. programs of privatization. Yeah. They wanted more socialist oriented policies. They mm -hmm. resisted IMF, you know, World Bank, you know, right. diktat. They were trying to develop alternative policies. Mm -hmm. In that process, mm -hmm. you know, they incurred the wrath okay. of a, another bunch of opportunists, you know, okay. who were around Rollins and Co., yeah. who, who saw this as a golden opportunity, for you well. know, for them, right? Yeah. And the difference, this is why we won them, the difference was that those people were armed. Those were soldiers, you, you know, civilians. officers behind Rollins and Co., right? And the whole thing was so, you know, uh, um, ethnocentrism came into it, to say, tribalized, you know. Um, so a lot of the so-called AVA officers, you know, mm. uh, were behind right. uh, uh, Rollins and Co., right? Okay. And most of these people, you know, the, who, who were friends, who were junior ranks in the army, you know, the Adabuga and Co., were just genius, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the army, right? Mm -hmm. Largely, you know, and uh, having, uh, with, with, with the uh, tribalization of, Military politics, okay. right? right? You know where our friends, you know, from the June Fourth, the civilians, you know, mostly civilians, the June Fourth, had no guns, had no weapons. Okay, okay, and with their friends who were junior officers, you know, chased out, you know, right. literally gunned down, literally, you know, became, you know, gun violence amongst them, and and we lost some of our, you know, uh, good comrades. You know, we yeah. lost people like uh, Kwame Ajima, mm -hmm. you know, and Co, you know, and. You know, my, my um, colleague uh, Nani Kofi will tell you a lot of the names of people who went along with them who lost it. Eventually, my own brother, Delali Yaoklu, you know, um, got traumatized by all these events and also eventually, you know, died a premature death, right? So 
I've suffered, you know, immensely from from this, you know, uh, Nani Kofi's own harrowing tales. Who do you My blame? My classmate, like uh, Tata Ofusu. Who, who do you, you blame for all these atrocities? <sighs> you, you see, first of all, there there is no process of social transformation that doesn't have a share of violence. It can be reactionary violence. You know, can be revolutionary violence. Okay. That is why we were approaching this carefully, right? Now, so in terms of apportioning blame, mm -hmm. I said it earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, some of my friends who re refused to seriously study revolutionary science and learn not just from books but, but also uh, from life. I'm, I'm just did talking about. Understand where... Nkrumah correctly. Do you and... do you at at, at any point yeah. blame yourselves? the movement that did not actually oppose the coup d'etat, probably if you had... No, we didn't blame ourselves but, because... But, and do you blame Rollins for it as well? I Yes, I apportioned some blame to Rollins. Okay. Right? Right. Uh, though I, 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 I would not share the position... Because you watched, you watched him. Blame, put all the blame on him. Yeah. say Rollins betrayed the revolution. Rollins probably might have betrayed the revolution, but they also have betrayed it, not just you know, when they ran away from uh, the Rollins regime, you know, but also when they came out into exile, you know, many of them did not take the opportunity to build on their revolutionary experience and do anything better. When Castro suffered the, the, the setback of the Moncada attack, he didn't abandon, you know, the revolutionary cause, you know, mm -hmm. he went and trained better, you know, and organized better. Okay. And, and, and so we saw the triumph of the Cuban Revolution 1959. Many of them, you know, abandoned ship, came into exile, you know, went to the same side as they accused Rollins of going, you know, now some are working for the IMF, World Bank, you know, and so on and so forth. So in effect, that that was that's what I was talking about, their, their careerist opportunism, you know. They wanted quick fixes with Rollins, you know, Rollins knew, that's the point, that's a fact. Rollins knew that they wanted to misuse him, mm -hmm. right? Rollins having gone back into government, you know, knew that he couldn't deliver on revolution, mm -hmm. right? So he, he, he did what he had come in to do. You know, in my view, just take power and use it, you know, for, for, for please whoever controls, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, 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 the order of new colonialism in Ghana and, and have a peaceful listening. And he did that for 10 Absolutely. years as a, 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 a virtually a military, you know, tyrant, okay? And then after that, you know, arranged elections and had another, you know, period of eight years, you know, sure. uh, you know, with incumbency, you, you manipulating incumbency, mm. you know. But that, so I, I would say they should take the blame. As for us, yeah. you know, in terms of those who did not uh, oppose, right. much rightly, uh, the, the so-called 31st December revolution, right. I'll say we're correct. Because one, we knew that we had not developed our, the organizational strength. Mm -hmm to withstand an armed force mm -hmm. that had at, the, at its command mm -hmm. the, and the entire armed forces, the police, the security services, which they had even made you know, more sophisticated, mm -hmm. right? You know, drawing upon even training, support from Cuba, from the Soviet Union, you know, where some of us were, you know, we saw all of this happening. Okay. So we, we don't know, I think we're correct. Mm -hmm. you know, to step out of the way, mm -hmm. you know, so that those whose op careerist opportunism had carried them into siding with Rollins to suffer the consequences and learn from that. And I think they've learned the lessons because many of them now, you know, they may talk progressive, but they will no longer champion revolution, right? Because they knew the way but much of the material... Is it, is it, make... is it all about the... the, the I... The game of revolution. winning or the revolution aspect or no. it's radical change as you wanted. Because, for instance, if you had participated yeah. um, within the Rollins PNDC, yeah. maybe you could have changed and no, made that was, positive No, no, no. It was complete, you, you see, revolution and its making, it's a science. Okay. You see, it are laws, which... You know, if you fail to obey these laws, it will go against you. Okay. Right? right? You know, you see, we were helped immensely by Osage for Kwame Nkrumah. 
Because after 1966, you know, please read the books Nkrumah wrote in okay. from Exile. Right. Self-critical. He said, you know, you need to, first of all, like the handbook of Revolutionary War, which is my favorite. Let's take a you quick know. break. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk much more. Thank you. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associate was established. Yes. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law, adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation and so on, up to date, has been broken and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law locally in London and across the borders in Ghana where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203. One three zero zero seven five one. Welcome back, Mr. Kulu. Yeah. I know we will be needing you much more. Okay. Right, um, because there is just not enough time. Yes. To yes. Talk about all of this, but a lot of people have blamed Rollins for yeah. the misfortunes of Ghana, uh, developmental issues of Ghana. What's your take on it? I think Rollins carries a huge blame, okay. but not alone, okay. you see. Rollins was a young officer okay. facing hardships, right. like everybody else you know, in the country you know, at that time. Yeah. And he used what he knew right. in his rebellious okay. um, antics yeah. of the time. If he had not uh, had people who encouraged him, yeah. mostly, seeking to opportunistically use, misuse, you know, his uh, tendencies towards reckless radicalism, okay. you know, thinking that, yes, he could, he could offer them a ticket into the luxury okay. of, of, of being in government mm -hmm. to better their lot. Mm -hmm. If those people hadn't come around him and encouraged him, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. And uh, they have sided with those of us who were discouraging anything like that, mm -hmm. right? Then, you know, he wouldn't have succeeded. You see, but opportunities went around him from all, you know, uh, kinds of places, including from amongst my own circle of friends, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, so the rest is the history that we know. But I would not say that Rollins can, should carry that blame alone. If people had insisted with Rollins, there were people around. For example, you know, the Chikatas, mm -hmm. learned people, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, uh, Fui Chachu, you know, uh, who, uh, who uh, uh, Chachu particularly worked with him throughout in government, you know, mm -hmm. right? Somebody like um, um, uh, Captain Kojo Chikata, mm -hmm. right? Who had experience with guerrilla movements, you know, that today, like the, you know, MPLA in Angola, I are still in, you know, running government, you know, could have, you know, and had friends among the Cubans, so, you know, knew what's a revolution that could yeah. endure, sustain yeah. itself, yeah. ought to be organized, yeah. you know, could have done, could, could, could have helped Rollins, you know, in such a way, no, stay away from this. This is not how things, you know, uh, are done. And again, even if we, who were teenagers at the time, young men, you know, at the time, mm -hmm. could benefit what, from what Nkrumah wrote, you know, Nkrumah's own example of after 1966, you know, sit down, critically look at yourself, mm -hmm. you know, look at your strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. what went wrong, what you did wrong, mm -hmm. what, you know, were the conditions. And if you really want to pursue the same thing, you do it much better, mm -hmm. you know, Castro and all that, you know, the lesson, the history of the world is full of people who've done that, you know, failed, you know, two, three times, you know, and then, you know, got it much better, right? You know, the Chinese Revolution, you know, all of these are, are the wonderful examples, you know, from which to learn. But people who went along, 
for their own opportunistic reasons and encourage Rollins down, you know, this, this path, you know, of, you know, recklessness. You know, that ended up, in my view, you know, disastrously for all of us, you know, um, and not just the people in Ghana, but also African people all over the world. Because mm -hmm. Ghana used to be the low star. Ghana used to be this shining black star mm -hmm. whose, you know, successes and failures, you know, informed the rest of the continent, mm -hmm. right? Look at where we are now. I mean, look at where we have degenerated, you know. And I think that one of the worst, you know, when history comes to be written, one of the worst periods in, in African history will be the so-called Fourth Republic of Ghana. Because it was born, you know, out of criminality. Right. The very constitution people are allowed in today mm -hmm. is a criminal arrangement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, I wouldn't say more than what, you know, uh, Basham for has said about these provisions, the constitution that, you know, uh, deny the Ghanaian people mm -hmm. from calling, you know, uh, 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 all who served in the Rawlings government of the PNDC, you know, to account, right. you know, right? I'm, I'm, I've learned my lesson you know, that those days that we're walking, you know, running around the streets demanding, let the blood flow. And we now have the blood of Kutua Champon and those who, who were slaughtered with him on our hands. And, and I have gone, I have personally gone, you know, to the Ghana High Commission and knelt down before a picture of a champon, you know, to apologize, okay. right? From, I have done that, okay? Because, and I'll, and I'll urge everyone who, who call for the blood of, you know, people like Achampon, you know, to do that. Because in comparison with what, the, what we saw as the errors of Achampon, when you look at what has happened with the PNDC, you know, and, 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 and you know, honestly, it's incomparable. It's incomparable. So I would not demand, you know, say, capital punishment. Never in my life. I mean, for, I'm against the death penalty totally, okay? But I still think that in the height of bravery for somebody like Jerry John Rollins and all those who served with him in the PNDC would be to stand before the people of Ghana and allow the people to critically examine their record in government. But right? I don't seem not to even understand that. He believes that if you are not taking the actions, then the country would have been in severe jeopardy. He's a liar. And anybody who argues like that, they are liars, right? It is to say that he was what? He was God? And, and he, his, his way of dealing with it was, was what God ordained for Ghana? This, this crass criminal opportunism with some of my friends, I mean, honestly, it's annoying, right? When, when you hear what, you know, young people, you know, who, like the, the soldiers who were misguided, who thought that they were doing something for the good of Ghana, Right? Who could have been taught better, but they were not taught better? Right? They were also misused. And a lot of people have lost their lives and with no chance, even for their families, you know, to gain anything from it. Right? Now to come and make it look like you were what? You know, God? And that your only way was hell? No. People in history always have many, many, many options. Right? And when you use armed force, like I've said, you know, that we're just before talking about Europeans mm -hmm. who brought colossal violence right. to push us down their way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And denied our African right to self-determination up till today. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, charters that sort of being played like colonialism and colonialism, but now by neocolonialism, which the people, the, the likes of Rawlings, you know, uh, 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 misused for their own purposes. Now, that is not the way. We had options. We, and and the, the simplest option, after the June 4th, 1979 uprising and the contradictions that erupted within the AFRC, which was an open book, right? Mm -hmm. The AFRC towards the end mm -hmm. had divided into factions that nearly, you know, uh, 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 sorted out their squabbles with gunfire, mm -hmm. right? Like happened within the Ethiopian, you know, uh, 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 process. Mm -hmm. Okay, with Mengistu and others, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where successive groups of army officers, you know, in, in the process, soldiers were mm -hmm. just, you know, killing each other and replacing each other with, you know, uh, uh, by just killing each other off, okay. right? That could have happened, you know, but that AFRC period taught everybody that the coup d'etat way, 
The way of, you know, see the revolutionary pushism was not going to deliver any genuine revolution. Okay. Not in Ghana, nowhere in Africa. He's never done so in the world. You know, even in France, when a, a similar situation arose with Napoleon, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, Karl Marx wrote this famous statement, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. talked about Bonapartism as mm -hmm. a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And Rawlings and Co., the June 4th movement, were advocates of Bonapartism, okay. you know, which was even counter to the Marxism, some of them, you know, misguidedly thought that they were they were representing and they misrepresented Marxism very badly. And when, you know, I, I said the lesson we learned, those of who are in Sri Lanka, those of who are in when we transformed it into the uh, Kwame Nkrumah United Ghana Front for Revolution and Democracy, got into the uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah Convention People Party with even the likes of uh, uh, Irod Mahama, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know John Mahama's father when he was in exile with us here in, you know, in London. We've, we've gone through quite a lot. The lessons were there. there. There are different options. There are different, there were different options then, you know, which was, you know, from the AFRC, we should have allowed the, the constitutional dispensation to work. You know, it would have corrected itself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, what is the difference? What, what, what is it that the constitution that Rawlings and others overthrew mm -hmm. criminally, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in 1981, mm -hmm. right? And the constitution which did not have immunity provisions for anybody, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And this bogus constitution which has, you know, immunity provisions okay. for them, okay. which was better. Which would have delivered better democracy for Ghana. Right, the one without it. Exactly. It? Of course. Right. And that's what I'm saying that if they are brave, if they are honest, right? You know, if they are genuinely patriotic and seek the best interests of Africans in Ghana, they should put themselves, all who serve the PNDC, right? And many of whom, you know, uh, uh, resurrected themselves in the first phase of the NDC. Okay, they should put themselves before critical scrutiny, public scrutiny, and say, here I am, probe my, my conduct, right? And I'm saying that the penalty, mm -hmm. if they're found to have done wrong, should not be capital punishment. Right? What, what, Even if it becomes a better truth and reconciliation okay. thing that the bogus one they did, okay. it will serve Ghana and Africa better. Right? Wow. If they refuse to do that, then they are, you know, lying hypocrites. And yeah. they should be seen as that. And, and this is what in you know, a lot of the problems we have in Ghana today are traceable, mm -hmm. you know, to this, you know, botched. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and misguided attempt at what has become a pseudo democracy, where everybody is now abusing, and we don't know what the twenty from what happened in you know I also West will go. We don't know what is going to happen in twenty twenty, but everybody can see in the writings on the wall that that violence that has inured to the benefit of those who are now you know who have gotten away with murder, literally, you know, is what informs. The, 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 the kind of, you know, politics we are going into with, you know, armed vigilante groups and, and, and causing mayhem and, you know, uh, interfering in electoral processes and so on. Because if somebody did it for, you know, decades and got away with it, why wouldn't people be tempted? And, and then they only all the, enshrined it in constitution that you can get away with. Right? No, we can't allow that. You know, we can't allow that. We have to get back, you know, to clean, decent politics. And if we will not do it decently, history will force it upon us indecently, right? When people refuse to do it in Liberia, what happened? When they refuse to do it in Sierra Leone, what happened? When they refuse to do it in Rwanda, what happened? If Ghanaians, and there is still time for us. Right. There is still time for genuinely patriotic Africans in Ghana who are in the best interests of Africa in Ghana and el elsewhere throughout the continent and, and the world, to stand up and say, peacefully, we will resolve this. You know, we will investigate everything and have a clean record and have a clean start. My position is we need a fifth republic of Ghana. Okay. Which is, you know, it, it results 
through participatory democracy. Today we have, in, in fact, you know, I'm part of Extinction Rebellion, right? Against the looming danger, you know, of climate change descending, you know, throwing the world, plunging the world into the anarchy of climate breakdown. There is, people are talking, Europeans all over are talking about climate emergency. In 10 years time, the world will be a completely different place of man, right? If we think we can allow this situation festering in Ghana to continue, we ain't seen nothing yet. Accra is an earthquake zone, prone to tsunamis, right? You know, the pollution, that the feel that engulfs Accra and is growing around the country. The, the complete breakdown of Ghana as, as, as a state. Ghana is a failed state, let's face it. Right? Everybody is doing what they feel like doing. Lawlessness. Right? You know, if we don't stop this madness, right? When there is a chance still that we can salvage something, if we don't stop it, we will see worse than Rwanda will happen in that country. Worse. We can't continue like this. We can't. I am old enough with experience of different kinds of regimes, you know, not only in Ghana, but across Africa, and also I've traveled the world, you know, to be able to say this openly. Let young people, let you open your eyes. You should not allow these old people to destroy your future. This is a chance, this is a time young people should rise up. When we were young, we had opportunities. We tried, we failed in certain things. But we owe you people, the younger generations, truth. Hold us to account and force us to tell you what we did wrong and what we think we did correctly and question us. Question us, right? All this foolishness of honorable this, honorable that, you know, it's nonsense, absolute nonsense, right? Today, anybody can plunge their hands into the coffers of the state, take whatever they want, no way of holding the person to account, right? You can pack your family into government, deny everybody else the opportunity, you know, and sit down there. And there is, I mean, I have, you know, in, I wasn't able to go to Ghana for decades. Right. When I started going back to Ghana, Honestly, I just don't know how people are able to live in a country like that. I don't know. It's like 90% of the people in the country are not human beings. They're not entitled to anything. Mm -hmm. A few are taking liberties with what belongs to all of us. And they're not even using these things in a way where you can say, okay, maybe in the next 10, 15 years time, get the there'll be something. Yeah. Nothing. Who, who is setting up industry? Look at our schools. Who, mm -hmm. who, what are they producing? Mm -hmm. What is being taught in this? There's no history. History is off the curriculum. So why, why will people even learn? Yeah from the mistakes of the past, from the glories and mistakes of the past. You look at Ghanaians now, most are just zombies, bereft of any intellect, right? And the worst of the miseducated fools are parading themselves around as the educated, right? Why, why, why has it come to this? Why won't people be asking, you know, even the likes of Nkrumah, what was this struggle for independence all about? Yeah, well, that was my next question. <laughs> Yeah. Right? But no, you see, that fights, and people think that our independence struggle started with only the likes of Nkrumah. No. From the day Europeans first set foot in that place, okay. which they later called the Gold Coast, okay. and met Nana Kwamina uh, uh, Ansa in Ejna. And he said, you can't settle here. That's when our resistance 
to reclaim our sovereignty, to effect reparatory justice. That's when it started. To reclaim but, but, our but sovereignty. But this is even where we liberalized ourselves. I mean, could it. We didn't even owe the... Um, and all of a sudden, the corruption that is run is just too much. Exactly. And we, we go back into debt again. Uh, then the question no, comes, because why, we, why, did the, the, why did we even liberate ourselves in the first place? I think Ghana would have been a bit better. No, because, you see, that's what I'm saying. It was a, every human being, every, every being on this planet, right. right? Even things we say are not living beings. Yeah. When you attempt to harm them, there's a way of fighting back. It's just reflexive. Good. Okay. Now, how do you channel that? to productive gain, okay? Mm. It can always be channeled to, into negativity. So that's, that's the battle so do you, of would, life. Would you, would you agree with Mandela then? That he didn't allow these white people to leave. He said, stay and help us. No, you, no. You disagree with him? I disagree. Okay. You see, I'm not, you know, not, you see, better, I'm not saying, I'm mm, not saying mm. that we shouldn't have white people, mm. right? Honestly, I'm a Pan-African internationalist. Okay. You know, I don't believe that African liberation will come about by driving right. the Africans out of Africa. Okay. I, I, I don't share that at all. That is not Pan-Africanism. Right. Okay. But Pan-African simply that we as African people right. will be in a driving seat. Africa is our home. If you come to but we Africa, are driving, we are driving. according to our Look rules. at it. We are driving our own... No, but you oh, see, oh, that's, look, that's, look that's, look that's you see, that is bumpy that, and very, very no, no, scary. That is the subject for another discussion yeah. altogether. Well, thank you very much for that. Because we are now talking about <laughs> neo-colonialism. Exactly. Right? Right. And this is, I've told you about what we have plan A, plan B, plan, plan C. Which we don't have. Right? Any. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you, yes, uh, we, we, we are a section of our people, not all of our people. Yeah can be blamed for this situation exactly. because they are channeling right. things into negativity. Right. But our people, that's what I'm saying, that neither Rollins, nor me, nor anybody has the right to impose yeah. their thinking on anybody. Right. We should all feel free mm -hmm. to express our thoughts, mm -hmm. let people accept, reject, mm -hmm. bring new ideas, mm -hmm. right? And then the one that the majority accept at a particular time, you know, let's all respect that decision, you know, and try it out. If we are all human beings, okay, mm -hmm. nobody is a fool, mm -hmm. right? You know, nobody is born stupid. If it's going wrong and it's not working for the majority of us, we will want change. Of course. Right? And mm -hmm. nobody should stand in the way of that change, right? Don't, you know, put, use the gun and put, you know, to clauses in constitutions that deny people the option to have a change, right? So now, if you go against this constitution, you're supposed to be committing treason. What about those who, who committed, who, who before, committed treasons before, so many before, times yes, before? Yeah, of course. Right? Anyway, you, you've done excellent, uh, Mr. Clu. I think we'll be inviting you back again. Okay. Uh, there, the, the, the topic is just unendless. And a brilliant program. Thank you very much. You Thank you very thanks. much. I mean, you see, the creativity that young people like you have, why should you not ensure that you have a country that allows you right. for this to flourish from your own homeland? Well, that's another topic for another day. Thank you very I much. Thank you very much, and yeah. I respect you so much for respect coming. Respect you too for this well, initiative. Viewers, this is where time will bring us. I'd like to say a big thank you for your time. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook, and also follow us on Instagram and on Twitter. Join us same time next week. It's the hour show.